Today we're going to talk about what being a 68 Whiskey Combat Medic attached to the infantry is like. But without further ado, let's get to it. What is up guys, Ben Allen back again with another video and like I just said, we're going to be talking about what being a 68 Whiskey is like when you're attached to the infantry, you know, and hell, even the scouts, right? Uh, so before we get into that, if you guys are new here, uh, my name is Ben Allen, I did four years active duty in the Army as a 68 Whiskey, uh, you know, attached to the infantry, I did a year and a half in the reserve, so I have that active duty knowledge and that reserve knowledge, so if you guys have any questions whatsoever, hit me up on my Instagram at Ben underscore Allen 175 best possible place to reach me I'll try to get back to you within a week uh, and we're trying to hit a hundred K subscribers here on the channel guys so I need y'all's help I need y'all to like this video so it pushes out to a larger audience and I need y'all to subscribe most importantly smash that subscribe button because six months uh, I want to hit a hundred K I think we can do it I need y'all's help uh, but yeah be sure to do that and with all that out of the way let's go ahead and jump straight into the topic right so this is gonna be a pretty simple video right we'll put all the juicy stuff towards the end even with the video that I found on TikTok that perfectly describes the grunt 68 whiskey relationship right but we'll get into like the the technical stuff first and you know like how it works and what it's like and you know in sense of doing your job but uh, you know being a 68 whiskey attached to the infantry is is it's rewarding but it's also shitty and it's fun at the same time like there's just so many different emotions that you can feel when being attached to the infantry as a 68 whiskey uh, and so right so how does it happen right typically usually from my experience it's kind of at random I remember I got to my unit at Fort Bliss and they were like oh you're going to Seaco on the line I was like a private like I wasn't even in like a month at my unit yet and they're like yeah those are the infantry dudes. you're attached to them this is your senior line medic blah blah, blah. you're attached to second platoon i was like all right cool and you know it's it's kind of a culture shock because if you've never been around like you know grunts before uh they're they're definitely gonna be like some some wild characters also some of the smartest people i've ever met in the army were infantry uh some of the dumbest people i've also met in the army were also in the infantry but they're not all dumb right contrary to popular belief i remember like you know a bunch of dudes just coming up to me they're like oh yeah you know hey i'm so and so blah blah you're gonna fit right in, in the platoon like i just added, it was like usually the other privates because i was a private also and each, some of the specialists uh trying to throw their weight around uh you can't fold to these dudes man you gotta you gotta be tough you gotta roll with the punches uh you gotta like you, you gotta be witty too if they roast you you gotta throw a roast back you know or else they're not gonna respect you they want a medic that can like hang out with the infantry you know what i mean that can be one of them while also being a medic like about the first weekend you know i was pretty tight with my platoon already they were already calling me doc after i treated this one dude typically you're gonna like get a bunch of weird requests uh from the infantry they're gonna be like yo doc do my balls look inflamed or something or like oh my dick's been burning right uh and usually it's just to like mess around and play with you if you're not comfortable with that be sure to bring it up to your leadership but you know that's just part of you know being a medic uh, is you know that initial like dumb uh, injuries that aren't even injuries right uh, and then once that happens it just, it just kind of fades away you get onesies and twosies here and there but then like you know they start to trust you they feel like comfortable coming to you with their issues and then you get like people come in like oh you know hey this hurts that hurts awesome uh, and all that fun stuff right and so it's again it's like pretty much 50 50 you can go to the the actual hac element where you're not attached to the line you could be in a hospital or you could be attached to the line with the combat arms right like i was and as you progress right you're slowly building up with these guys and you're not just going to be doing your your medic training whatever uh you know company you're attached to whether it's a you know a scout platoon maybe or you know an infantry company and you're attached to your platoon and they're doing you know training uh, don't be the medic that's just kind of like sitting around just all oh, waiting for somebody to get hurt like no be, be running the be running the missions with them you know what I mean like train with them uh, that's what it's gonna really set you apart because it's it's good for you and it's good for them right because they see that they can trust you even more because they know that you're proficient in like maybe room clearing or you know just any of the tables they have to do right and you as a medic you're making yourself more versatile right because yeah you might have had clinic time or whatever but you don't know any of like the tactical shit right you don't know any of the battle drills and so you're running through with these guys you know clearing houses doing the mount training and you know you're getting all this valuable experience 
experience that you can carry over into your next position, whatever it may be in the army, right? Maybe you get promoted to sergeant, right? And now you have like medics under you, you're a senior line medic. You can teach that stuff to your guys to help make them better for when they get attached to the line or they go to a hospital or they go to the clinic, right? And so I think it's very, very valuable to be attached to the line, especially early on, uh, because you get that added knowledge. Like, I, yeah, I was a 68 whiskey, but sometimes I felt like my secondary MOS was 11 Bravo or, you know, 19 Delta and fuck, even like some of the tankers shit because i was attached to the tankers as well as and the scouts and the infantry uh and so you just pick up things here and there right it just makes you overall an all-around medic uh, which I think is great. So that's one of the, the best things about being a 68 Whiskey attached to the infantry is the added knowledge that you're gaining, right? And next we're gonna move on to like the relationships, right? The relationship you guys build with your infantrymen or your scouts is like top tier, bro. There's There was dudes in my infantry company that would straight up get into a fight, like if I needed them to, just because they didn't want anybody to like mess with Doc. They didn't want any of that. They like, they're so super protective over their medics guys and you'll feel like you know this you'll feel safer than the president honestly like the relationship that a medic has with his grunt is just insane it's like nothing but love it's respect uh and it's it's, it's crazy i don't even know how to describe it to you it's it's just something that you have to experience for yourself to understand what i'm talking about i'm pretty sure some of you guys that have been attached to the infantry or even if you're infantry watching this you know like dude nobody's fucking with your medic right uh, and to me, that was always one of the cool things, right? Because you don't really get that in like your medic platoon, right? So maybe you're in a platoon of medics or just with your, you know, home element, like you're not attached to the line, right? It, it's it's a pretty toxic there, honestly. Like you don't really get that, like, yeah, you guys work together and you make friends with certain individuals, but you're not friends with everybody in your medic platoon, really. And it's just kind of toxic, you know, there's a lot of drama. And so like, I remember when I, like, I wouldn't be on the line, like I'd be back at like HEC or like a, like our medic platoon. I hated it, bro. I was like, please God, just send me back to the line. And thankfully I did not spend very much time with like the evac and all that shit. I just went on the line most of my career in the army, right? Uh, which I'm very fortunate for, because honestly, like it, it was a fun time. It was good. Uh, and I met a lot of great friends like that. Like most of the people I would go out with on base, like to the clubs and shit, were either my scouts or my infantry dudes. And we we're just having a blast. It was a great time. And to be honest, I wouldn't change it at all. Like, I mean, I, I do think you do need some clinic time, which thankfully I got also as a private because when our infantry guys were assigned to like pull like, uh, not gate guard, but they were like uh, pulling security in these towers in Kuwait. Uh, we had to help man the clinic because there's only three of us attached to the, the infantry company and so they just kind of loaned us out to the clinic that was on the base that we we're at just for like a few months so we got some clinic time I got to work with the PAs it was good because I got to take that knowledge back to my infantry guys right uh, and so it, it's it's pretty good because you know you learn a lot you make a lot of friends and just overall it, to me it feels rewarding you know what I mean and bro, my first sergeant freaking loved me uh, back in Korea. Like that dude was awesome. Like he was like, nah, you're right with me, doc, let's go. Uh, and you know, just like all the higher ups, like and that's another thing, right? Like, so typically, right, if you're a private or E form below, right? You know, you have NCOs, they're pretty much in charge of you. You know, that's your leadership, parade, rest, all that fun stuff, right? Like, dude, I was like shooting the shit with my first sergeant, sergeant first class, you know, E6, all that shit. Cause the medic is like that middle ground, right? Like, yes, you're, if you're E4 and below, yeah, you're, you're lower enlisted, but also you, you have to be able to talk to the higher ups, right? Because you have to relate to them like, hey, so and so is injured, uh, sick call. You have to give them the accountability of these soldiers. You have to give them a brief, like what's going on so they can know what's wrong with their soldiers, right? Because they are their leaders and it's just very important. So if you guys have that issue where you can't really talk to higher ups because you're nervous or you're scared, like throw that out the window. You have to be confident as a medic and you have to be confident in what you know and what you don't know because these dudes are gonna be able to smell it out. If you if you're bullshitting them, bro, like if you're trying to bullshit to like a first sergeant or a sergeant first class or something, chances are they've been around the block or two and they know when somebody's bullshitting and you do not want to be caught as a bullshitter, as a medic, especially with your guys, because you're going to lose the trust and there's, there's just going to be a whole shitty situation, right? Trust is probably one of the most important things between a medic and whoever they're caring for. And, you know, it's just, it's just that, it's, it, that's a big deal, right? And so just to finish off this video, I want to go ahead and play uh, 
this TikTok I found, right? I think it's the username that uh, I found it on was the underscore fat underscore electrician. Uh, he perfectly describes, like gives you a little bit of background info on like the medics themselves and you know what the relationship with the infantry and a 68 whiskey is like freaking hilarious i loved it i had to save it I had to throw it in this video so i hope you guys enjoy it too and here's the clip we talked about grunts both marine and army but we did not talk about the other member in their squad we're talking about doc we're talking about the only guy on the battlefield that can both stack and unstack bodies While a lot of people just think of him as a motrin vending machine they'll tell you to drink enough earth sauce but in reality, Doc's a pretty bad motherfucker. I don't know if you've ever seen a grunt in person or in action, but they are fucking enormous. And these are the only guys rated to pick them up and carry them home. Doc also has to keep up with the grunts while carrying an extra 35 pound medical bag. It's for reasons like this that Doc is one of the only other MOSs besides infantry that is granted non-POG status. Or POG, however you want to say it. Now a lot of people don't know this, but this guy's actually the most dangerous motherfucker on the battlefield. Here's why. I said in my previous videos that grunts just don't give a fuck. That was kind of a lie. They do have one fuck to give, and that is for Doc. There is absolutely no way on the planet to get unalive faster than to fuck with a grunt's medic. You see, there's a special relationship between a grunt and his medic. Doc's a guy that'll give you an IV so you're not hungover in the morning. Doc's a guy that'll pick a tick out of your taint with his fucking teeth if he has to. But most importantly, when the shit hits the fan, Doc is these guys' only lifeline. When you attack Doc, you not only attack a member of their squad, you attack the entire squad as a whole at the same fucking time. See, if you take a pop shot at a squad of grunts, they'll return fire. But if you take a pop shot and it lands anywhere fucking near Doc, things are going to escalate very quickly. Grenades will immediately get blooped. Belts are getting run through the 240. And before you realize that you even made a fucking mistake, you are already getting flanked. What's about to happen to you will get brought up the next time Geneva has a convention. Times like this is when these become deadly weapons. I guess what I'm trying to say is, is if you ever need to point a gun at the infantry, do not point it at the guy with the big backpack first. Because when you pull that trigger, you sign the most certain death wish in existence. Even a man walking down death row for the last time has a better shot at making it through that than you do. Because he at least has a chance that God will perform a miracle. You don't. Because God loves the infantry. That's why he sent the battlefield angel to protect them. In conclusion, whether you hear these guys yelling hoo-ah or hoo-rah, it would behoove you not to fuck with their medic. If you enjoyed this video and would like to buy me a beer about it, there is a link in my bio. There is also a link in my bio to my YouTube channel. These videos seem to get taken down on TikTok. I will re-upload them there and hopefully they'll stay there forever. Thank you for your service. But that right there, guys, is exactly what I'm talking about, right? Like, nobody's messing with their doc. Like, if you're the medic, bro, you're basically, you know, one of the most valuable people to them. That's, like, they've never called me a pogue when I was attached to the infantry, all that fun stuff. Like, you just... You just don't get called that because you're basically one of them. They they love you and they'll get pissed, bro. Somebody's like, oh yeah, and like just some random person calling you a poke. They're like, nah, bro, that's Doc. Like, fucking crazy. And you'll realize also as a medic that sometimes the infantry are some of the biggest crybabies there are out there. And you got, don't come for me, bro. You guys know it's fucking true too. They'll come to you for like the smallest thing, bro. A little paper cut. I'm like, oh, doc, you know, my finger. I don't think I can do PT tomorrow. Ah, And you're just like, really? Like, really? Here's a band-aid. Like, you still you still got to do PT. You're not getting out of that shit. Uh, but it, it's just funny, right? Because, you know, they're supposed to be, like, real, like, tough and hard and shit. And they are. But, you know, it's still the things they complain about is hilarious. And you're just kind of like, whoa. Uh, but you'll learn a lot, guys. To summarize, you'll learn a lot. You'll have fun. You'll make great friends. It's very rewarding to me anyway. And, you know, you, like... It's just great because like, you feel like you have a second home with them as opposed to being with, like a medic platoon or just something that's not attached to the line because it's just drama, toxic, and all that stuff. Uh, I had a blast on the line. I'm sure if you guys go to the line, you'll love it as well. Uh, it's just a good time, and I think you guys will enjoy it too to an extent. You learn a lot of cool stuff, and you know you get to bond with the other few medics that are also attached to that like company with you. So keep that in mind. I really hope you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to like it, give it a thumbs up, and you know if you're new here um, we're trying to get 100k subscribers in six months so i need y'all's help smash that subscribe button show the support it takes two seconds go ahead and hit it right now i'll wait 
All right, there you go. Thank you. I appreciate that. If you have any questions whatsoever, follow me on my Instagram at Ben underscore Allen 175. Best possible place to reach me if you have any questions whatsoever. And if you guys are going to the field and you feel like you're dirty and shit, uh, check out coldpressbricks.com. Uh, DWK videos, you know, he puts out some military content as well. Funny dude. Uh, it's his company and you can get 10% off using my code Ben Allen 10. Uh, link will be in the description. Thank you all so much, guys. I will see y'all in the next one. Later.